Welcome to a new update on this Tuesday. Bitcoin is correcting, it's dropping down and that is not an unlikely outcome as in almost every meeting going into FOMC we see fear and especially in crypto it is a multiplier because crypto people are retarded and that's why they are trading uh, out of emotions instead of rationality and that's why you can always see a going towards an event and in this case FOMC that we are seeing some fear in which the price action has been dropping down on Bitcoin. We're going to discuss that today. We're also going to discuss some foot regarding micro strategy, and we're going to discuss what's happening in the banking system in the US with First Republic Bank. But before we continue, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe beneath as well. Also make sure tomorrow at 19.30 Central European time, I'll be going live again during the Fed meeting. Of course we will go live. Uh, we always do. I'll be giving my view on the markets overall as well. And we are going to listen to what Granddad Powell is going to say towards us. Then there's another thing. Yesterday I've started shooting my beginners course. It is called the Crypto Course 101 in which you can get an all-round overview of everything in the markets including TA and portfolio startup. It is a course of around six hours and you are able to win or any other features um, you can actually get it by a discount and such. Make sure to whitelist beneath um, as we are planning to launch it on the 15th of June. Then, then there's also something else. Next week I'll be speaking again. This time I'll be going towards Turkey and I'll be speaking in Istanbul for 15 minutes. If you are going to be there in Istanbul next week and you're going to the event, make sure to send me an email or send me a DM on Twitter. I'll be happy to meet with you. Now, when we're talking about the markets, I think macro is telling us enough. Right now we are seeing lots of stuff taking place. Another bank has collapsed, which was just a ticking time bomb. We have been seeing Yellen speaking some stuff. We are still having the debt ceiling on the US. And we've got a case where we have also have micro strategy fought, which is, which is kind of unwarranted. But f before we're going to discuss the news, I first would like to show you a video which I saw yesterday where we can see Biden be sp speaking towards the public and telling us that we should be safe. Here we go with the update from Biden. He's speaking, it's always fun. And he is going to tell us whether we're going to be safe or not. Start, before we start, uh, I'm pleased to say that the regulators have taken action to facilitate the sale of First Republic Bank and ensure that all depositors are protected and the taxpayers are not on the hook. That's bullshit. These actions are going to make sure that the banking system is safe and sound, and that includes protecting small businesses across the country who need to make payroll for workers and their small businesses. And so let me be very clear. All depositors are being protected, shareholders are losing their investments. And critically, taxpayers are not the ones that are on the hook, as I said earlier. <coughs> now going forward, I've called on Congress to give regulators the tools to hold bank executives accountable and I've called on regulators to strengthen regulations and supervision of large and regional banks. And folks, uh, we have to make sure that we're not back in this position again. And I think we're well on our way to be able to make that assurance. All right, so he's telling us a lot. First of all, he's saying that uh, the taxpayers are not paying. I think the taxpayers are actually paying. Well, we'll be discussing that in a little bit. It's also funny that he's speaking in a microphone while there is a microphone is standing in front of him. But um, the point here is First Republic Bank has fallen. So what has actually been happening? That's what I'll be discussing next. So Biden has been speaking and saying we should not be getting into this position anymore. He's also been saying shareholders are the ones who are paying and the one uh, the taxpayers taxpayers are not the ones paying for it in reality shareholders are actually making a gain because if you are holding jb morgan you are actually getting paid more the ones that were holding first republic bank got diminished of course but the taxpayers are actually going to pay for the debt that we have or that it had in the bank itself so um 
First Republic Bank was falling down. It has fallen since March. It is one of the few banks that did survive the previous cascade in which, as you can see, there were more banks who have been falling. First of all, Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate, Signature Bank, all fell apart in a time frame of three days. Um, during that weekend, uh, First Republic Bank was also close to falling down. However, it survived as it got an injection for approximately 30 billion. But it didn't last long enough because in the past weeks we saw that approximately 100 billion has been taken out of the banks, uh, has been withdrawn from depositors from First Republic Bank and that cascaded the entire price action or the entire stock valuation of First Republic Bank through which it had to be taken over by another big bank, which is JP Morgan. When we talk about big banks, First Republic Bank is the number 13 um, in the US. And also Silicon Valley and another bank were in the top 20 and they have all been fallen. So what is happening now is that JP Morgan took over the bank. So JP Morgan becomes larger, becomes more centralized and more and so a few banks become too big to fill. But at some point, the um, the entire problem goes towards those big banks overall. So now First Republic Bank has fallen. The government has stepped in through which the government has survived the bank itself through which depositors are not in trouble. So right now we are having a case of five banks who have fallen in the past 60 days, uh, five large banks, and those five combined are larger than all the 25 or 30 banks that have fallen in 2008. So the banking crisis is substantially larger than what we have witnessed in 2008, but we're not there yet in terms of panic. We are getting towards it, but we're not there yet. But at some point we will. Then when we go back towards the tweets from Gaber, I was mentioning that the taxpayers are the ones that are not going to be paying. That's what he said. But if you look at the data, JB Morgan is expecting a 2.6 billion gain, 2 billion restructuring cost write-off, and a 50 billion fixed term loan. You can ask yourself, where does the money come from if taxpayers are not impacted? And then, 20% expected IRR is in the deal documentation. Um, so yeah, JB Morgan is going to make a big gain out of this. The FDIC is taking the garbage through which the FDIC is a government institution which is being funded by government money, which means that the government is taking the bad debt, um, the banks are making money out of it, and the taxpayer is going to pay for it, whether or not it's going to be by um, the fact that it's money that you're paying through taxes and that goes towards the bank to, make it, or to, to let it survive, or it is through the fact that they have to print money again, which inevitably ends up by going to see higher inflation through which you are going to pay for it as well because loans are never casually growing with inflation. So we're getting into a theory of are we going to have a collapse or are we going to have a continuation of the system and inflation remains high so skyrocketing um, markets can continue. That's the question here. If we're going to see high inflation and the Fed sustains or stays stable on the high interest rate at this point, we can have a soft landing. But if you look at the amount of debt that we have in the markets and real estate, it's still relatively calm, but it takes approximately six months and then it starts to fall too. Uh, you can probably get a theory that we are about to collapse with the entire economic, sy uh, economic system, especially if six banks or five banks have fallen already. So this is what is taking place right now. And if you think about the government and whether they are not ethical, you can look at what has been taking place with a congresswoman. Her name is Louise Frankel. She sold First Republic Bank in March before the stock started to fall by 80%. After she sold First Republic Bank, she bought JP Morgan Chase, which just bought First Republic Bank. She clearly had inside info. Um, and it's funny because at the actual top of the markets, it was clearly stated that Congress people or government people cannot be trading stocks anymore, but clearly they still do. So um, if you think about the markets and whether they are um, honest and they move 
transparently it's not the case there's always inside info so enough about that one when we talk about more FUD and more stock markets we talk about micro strategy and I think if you play a bingo of bank bank banks that have been falling you can also play a bingo of crypto people that have been falling and one of them is of course micro strategy that still has to go in that case micro strategy earnings came out um, the earnings are there is an operating loss even backing out in permanent in permanent charges coin is fronting cash for bit bitcoin buys um, 2.2 billion in long-term debt obligations creeping up plan to dump shares and bitcoin to cover it's not true they are bleeding cash and dumping shares that can be true because when we look at the data there is a 2.2 billion in addition to 2.4 million in coupon interest due each semi-annual period for the 2025 convertible notes then they say we do not expect cash and cash equivalents generated by our enterprise analytics software business to be sufficient to satisfy these obligations so the higher interest rates are killing the markets for and killing the company of micro strategy at some point a common stock uh, class a common stock borrowings collateralized by bitcoin or the sale of our bitcoin and that's marked by this tweet they could be selling their bitcoin but if you go further down the line there's a tweet or there's a a message stating a few paragraphs down as of march 31st 2023 we held approximately 140k bitcoins of which approximately 125k are unencumbered we do not believe we will need to sell or engage in other transactions with respect to any of our bitcoins within the next 12 months to meet our working capital requirements so they are not they might be selling their bitcoin and i think if the valuation of bitcoin goes down or stay this low when then they are most likely needing to sell bitcoin to stay um, liquid but overall they also say that they don't need to in the next 12 months so there's fat right now on the market stop it it's not need and it's so unnecessary on the other hand you can buy cheaper of course but it's i mean it's just People should stop doing this to be quite honest with you so then tomorrow the big day uh, probably I've been saying this for a few times already but tomorrow is gonna be maybe the most important form C meeting uh, of the entire year tomorrow the federal funds rate has been going up by nine months already they have been accelerating it they went from 75 bips in a meeting to 50 and now they are at 25 um, the projections as you can see on the screen are that we're going to get 25 pips as a rate hike right so tomorrow 94 percent chance that we're going to get 25 pips that's also what we see in the markets nasdaq is consolidating still relatively strong but if we're looking at the yields it is showing us a rally which means that the markets are quite conservative and expecting the fed 25 pips to happen so that is priced in most likely another 25 pips rate hike in june is also priced in what are we looking at and especially if you can see on the bottom of the screen you can see the probability by percentage it went from 50 50 to 94 5 in just a month so the markets are risk off at this point um dxy is going up a little bit too the 25 pips isn't the important part of course if we get no rate hike it's going to be per uh, period of fun if we're going to get 25 bips you can assume that we're going to get a correction if we're going to get 25 bips and powell is starting to become dovish in his structure of future forecast that is going to be dovish too as i mentioned in previous updates i said that if he stops and if we pause it means that we've reached the the ceiling of the interest rates during the period that he's not pivoting it is time to start rallying up with the markets in order to have altcoins moving bitcoin needs to break 30k ether needs to bounce against bitcoin and altcoins can then start firing off but you need to get confidence and confidence can be brought by the fed and it's fake confidence because the economic system is so broken at this point but if we're going to get the 25 pips rate hike and if we're going to assume that from there we pause it is start to get fireworks on the other hand if he mentions that they're going to do 25 bips 
and they want to continue doing that for the entire year and the interest rate or the federal funds rate is going to be higher than expected it is time to have some serious pain because then they are really cracking down the economic system because then more parties will have some issues they already have it but if the higher we go the more intrinsic pain we get with the banks and debt markets so that's why tomorrow is going to be important and the actual news at 8 p.m is not the most important news it is powell his speech and that's why you need to tune in tomorrow at the event as i'll be live streaming at 7 30 p.m central european time now we've got all this data what can we see in the charts let's move to them so one way looking at the markets the first thing we have to look at is the fear and greed index um, currently it's at 55 so there's still greed i think the most greed can be shown through pepe and all the any meme coins um, they show a clear pattern of of bullishness which is inducing the entire greed in the markets in that case the crypto fair and greed index has been falling from 63 to 55 so that's good but overall um, not there's not much data to get out of this entire chart now when we look at the markets we can see that we're still facing a crucial resistance area right so we're consolidating here we are consolidating above the EMAs and the MA so if we still have a correction slightly taking place to 26k it would be above the 200 ma and ema uh, we had the cross here too so this is pretty much fine we're still consolidating although if we're going to have a break beneath the low and we close beneath the low that is going to be pushing the prices down even more at this point this means that uh, we're still in the middle of the upwards trend i've been discussing this we have been making lower highs, lower lows here, and now we are making higher highs and higher lows. So even though if we create a higher low at 25K, it's still uptrending. So we can still continue, and in order to have that continuation, you want the FOMC and the Fed to start pausing their hikes. Um, if they start pausing their hikes, that's going to result into more continuation on the markets. So that, that's what we're seeing on the higher time frames here. However, if we're looking at the lower time frames, we can see clearly see that we are in between thoughts, right? So before I start discussing this, let's first look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has bounced from a level of support, currently still trending up. It's tricky because we have just barely been breaking above the recent high. We clearly need to continue staying above this level, uh, which we will be seeing in the coming few days. If we start falling beneath 13,180, I think we can start cascading towards the lows here. Um, and if, if the FOMC or if FED is going to be hawkish, I think we will be having that as a result. Trend remains to be upwards, but if that's going to be the case, trend becomes um, bearish and you can expect a further correction taking place. So it's on the edge of a pretty important indicator of the trend. Right now we've seen this uptrend, which was suiting Bitcoin. And I think we can still continue running throughout the area of 14,800 but if we cannot sustain or stay above 13,180 I think we're going to have a pretty swift correction taking place the dollar right now we are running up uh, as I mentioned we've got fear in the markets and as a result the DXY starts to rally upwards there's no clear view yet where we are going to top out I would assume that it's just a bear market relief rally um, and I think that tomorrow is going to give us a, a clear view that it's going to reverse if Powell is going to be dovish. Um, in between levels, I think 1.3 is going to be a level where you could be finding ourselves into resistance, sweeping the low. And I still believe that we're going to get towards 88 points on this one. More importantly, if you're looking at the two-year yields, the two-year yields have been making this rally up, right? So the two-year yields have got a weekly bearish divergence and now a bear market relief rally, I would say. This means that close enough, we're going to continue falling down here, which we have been seeing in 2018 too, in which we had this run. Here we've got the run to bearish market relief rally taking place in between. Here we've had a swift correction, swift correction bounce, my bounce here too, and continuation of the downwards trend in the coming period is very likely. And as long as we have that, including a weak dollar, it's going to suit Bitcoin. So you might be understanding that at this point, we're going to get a pretty swift correction on the markets. Of course we can, but I think that you still want to be on the long side when it comes to Bitcoin, rather than being on the, down, on the short side. 
this is looking e eager to start falling south um, on the other hand the dxy is also still trending down but bouncing from support so we clearly have to see what the power is going to do tomorrow going back or circling back towards bitcoin first gold staying here same view as with the nasdaq if we cannot sustain above the recent high at 1950 it's gonna have a pretty heavy correction taking place circling back towards bitcoin bitcoin is currently on the daily time frame in between thoughts right so we've got the resistance zone here at 30k we've got it there we have not been breaking through it yet uh, we have been getting a pretty nice rally towards it but then we started to correct we also have a case of this range support at 26.6 .6, which can still sustain as one and then even though we've been marking it as a level that we couldn't be hitting 25k is also an important indicator now what is most likely going to take place most likely in the coming 24 to 36 hours we're going to get a lot of volatility what i'm eyeing at this point is that we look at any of these two levels for entries and then we swiftly go back towards the highs if we are going to have first impulse pulse towards the highs you can expect this to take place and then we take all the liquidity here before we start circling back up i still believe that the fed is at the end of the entire policy at this point and that this trend is not over yet and that we can continue moving from here in that regard the levels are quite clear there to watch and i can understand that it's quite difficult to anticipate what the markets are going to do the trend is most likely going to turn south and then you've got the in tremendous opportunities to buy back on lower regions 25k 26k are the levels potentially even 22 if we get a deeper correction taking place but if we look at the higher time frames, the higher time frames are currently indicating that we are still trending up and that you want to buy the dip to continue from there. If you are into altcoins, altcoins are going to do well if Bitcoin breaks 30k. Until then, the dominance of altcoins will just continue moving up. But if we are looking at the chart here, we can argument that we're going to get into a stage where we're going to get a bearish divergence taking place. So that's the update for today. Make sure to be there tomorrow. I'll be discussing everything surrounding the Powell's event and Fed and FOMC. 7.30 p.m. Central European time and subscribe to the YouTube. Ciao.